here at the Pluribus Networks booth at uh, VMworld 2017. And can you tell us a little bit about your role at the company and what you're showing here at VMworld? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Steven Shalita with Pluribus Networks. Pluribus Networks is a seven-year-old uh, company focused on software-defined networking. We build network operating software that allows you to run advanced capabilities, fabric functionality, analytics on standard open networking hardware. Great. And um, so what are some of the differentiating factors to uh, your software compared to some of your competitors? Well, the key thing that, uh, that, that we've done that really differentiates us is in a couple of key areas. First, we've built the, the only network operating system that virtualizes the underlying hardware. Similar to how uh, virtualization happens in a server, we take a networking device and we actually virtualize it into multiple physical, or a single physical device into multiple virtualized devices. Second element that we have is we built in our fabric architecture. This allows you to connect these switching devices into a single big network fabric that can be in a single data center location or distributed over multiple data centers. And what's unique about our architecture is it's SDN with all of the benefits of SDN without the requirements of controllers or specialized operating uh, uh, software or protocols. So that allows you to put this into any existing network environment. You can insert it without having to completely replace the network. You can be in just the leaf or just the spine and get the advantages of that. The third area that I mentioned is our integrated telemetry. That's our ability to look at the performance of the network and the application from within the operating system environment. So essentially the network switches running the NetVisor software become visibility points into the network so you don't need probes. There's no compromises. We can see everything that's happening on the network from our switches. So that gives you visibility, not into the not only the traditional north-south traffic, but also all of your east-west traffic. And with our integrations, we're able to see into the, the server and the compute layer as well. And so where do you think the future of virtualization and cloud you know, compare, um, related to networking is going in the future? Well, clearly virtualization has got a strong hold in the compute and the storage area, and you're now just starting to see it become reality in network. And, and really, for many, many years, the network has not been behind. So it's really a key direction that things are going. And bringing cloud-like functionality into the network to get the elasticity, to get the scale and add it as a service model is key. So bringing both the virtualization and cloud functions to the underlying network is a major, a major uh, strategic direction. This is going to be capped off with intent-based networking. And that's the ability for the network to understand how all of these pieces work together, what the intended end state is supposed to be, and being able to make adjustments and seeing how the network, how the cloud, how the compute layer are operating and make self-optimizing, self-correcting adjustments to deliver the highest performance and, and the best in, in the sense of user experience and availability. Now, I, I realize that sometimes being able to show networking is a difficult thing, but do you guys have a demo that we can take a look at? Absolutely, I think it'd be great to show you what we're doing with VMware and the integrations. And, and at a high level, we've got a couple of key things that we've done. We've integrated our entire uh, platform automation and programming and provisioning with the vCenter environment that will allow you to provision not only at uh, vSAN level, NSX level, and the rest of the, the managing of uh, the hypervisor workloads with the network, but we'll be able to show you how we're actually able to simplify the provisioning of the entire network architecture right from vCenter. So what are you going to show us? All right, so uh, let me just first introduce myself. So my name is Pierre-Louis Jean-Jean. Uh, I'm actually a technical marketing engineer here at Pluribus Networks. And uh, I, what I'm going to show you right now is how easily it is to provision the network based on the vSphere configuration. So basically, uh, vCenter integration, when you create new workloads and you want to automate and provision the network according to the vSphere configuration. I'm going to show you how easy it can be with our fabric solution. Great. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, um, 
we have a leaf and spine architecture. It's based on an L3 underlay. So basically we have two spine uh, at the core of the network and uh, several devices at the edge of the network where we attach all the ESXi servers. So starting from this, we can very easily show which kind of nodes we have in the fabric. Okay. So uh, it's very easy, one single command, and we can really show how many switches we have in that fabric. If we need to scale the number of switches, we just add new switches and it's gonna show up in the same command. Show me all the nodes part of the fabric. So then it's really the uh, fabric part. So on the networking part, um, what we have is a typical environment with vCenter, uh, a bunch of ESXi, some VMware, some, some VM running, and obviously some applications running on top of uh, this uh, vCenter cluster. <clears throat> and usually when a VMware admin is doing some uh, operations like creating a new VM, attaching this VM to network construct, um, the main challenge is to make sure that we align all the VM network construct with whatever is defined into the network fabric, into the network layer. And frankly, in the legacy network, it has always been a pain point to provision all the VLANs, all the routing in the network to make sure that it is consistent with whatever exists in the virtualization layer. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how we can, for example, just use create a new port group, create a VLAN, add a VM to the port group, and show you how it's gonna be provisioned automatically within the fabric. So first of all, we're gonna, so the VMs are already created, so I'm not gonna recreate any new VM, so, but what we're gonna do is that we're gonna provision a new port group. Okay, and let's say I'm provisioning this new port group as a VMware admin, so I got my new app. Creating a new VLAN. Okay. So nothing really complicated here. It's just uh, any operation that a virtualization admin would do. Just adding this to the lag on the ESXi part and done. Okay. So here, I just have created my new port group with a brand new VLAN, which doesn't exist into the fabric. Okay, so if you remember, it was just VLAN 50. If I do a VLAN show for this specific VLAN, you will see that it doesn't exist into the fabric. So to make it exist and, and live into the fabric, what we just need to do is to add a VM to that network resource, creating the vSphere layer. So here, what we're gonna do, it's back to the VM. And to make it work, we can just add the VM to the new port group with this new VLAN. Okay, new app port group. <clears throat> okay, and doing this, what we're gonna do as a network, as a VMware admin, is just wait for the fabric to be provisioned, okay? So the way it works with our solution is that the fabric through the API will talk to vCenter and browse the inventory to see what kind of VM is associated to what kind of network resource, okay? So slowly we will be, we will see that in that, um, in the fabric, we will see the VLAN that will be created in a few seconds, just waiting for the fabric to browse the inventory, see that new VLAN created, a VM is associated to it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create the VLAN. If this is an L2 underlay, we're gonna populate the VLAN into all the fabric to make sure that we can communicate with other machines created in the same VLAN. If it's an L3 underlay based on VXLAN for layer two extension, we're gonna provision that VLAN, associate a VNI to it, and populate the fabric based on this VLAN to VNI mapping, okay? So the next piece of integration, and, and we will uh, make the, the focus on, on this just later on, is how we integrate with uh, NSX, for example, and how we can provide connectivity for bare metal resources 
two VMs uh, sitting behind an NSX deployment. Okay, so uh, basically what we do is that the fabric fully integrate with NSX manager and you can really program um, the fabric from NSX manager. Okay. So I'm gonna move to that one. So you can see here that from the fabric, <coughs> uh, from the fabric, we have different switches, part of the fabric, that are uh, considered as layer two gateway extension for the NSX deployment. Okay, so those two uh, switches, part of the same fabric, are forming a cluster. So it's a hardware cluster redundant, fully redundant. So whatever resource you create on one switch you will create it on the other switch to make sure that it's fully redundant. Once we have this, what we can do is obviously associate a logical switch from an SX to any bare metal port or resource that we have in the fabric. Okay? So what we do with this piece of integration uh, is that we associate a cluster, an HA pair cluster, as a hardware VTEP layer 2 gateway to a logical segment which is configured in NSX Manager. Okay, so basically the fabric becomes an extension of an NSX deployment and we can easily connect bare metal resources to uh, any VM that is sitting on the logical switch with, in an NSX deployment. This is what we do. All right. Okay, so just Okay, so just to end this uh, on the VLAN provisioning part, sorry, this took a, a few seconds to get it down, but you can see here that we have just created a VM, uh, associated a core group to that VM with a VLAN, and then it's get populated within the fabric on all cluster ports, fabric port, and VXLAN tunnels associated to it. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, very easy to deploy, very simple to, to understand that whenever you create a new resource in VMware vCenter, it's going to get populated into the fabric only on the places where we really need that VLAN or that network resource. That's how we do it. Great. Well, thanks for taking this time to speak with VM Blog. Thank you. Thanks a lot.